there was one of the Hasidim, the followers of the fourth Rebbe of Chabad, who's called Rebbe Shmuel, the Maharash, he's called the Maharash, Rebbe Shmuel. And of course, they lived in Russia. There was all, there was, was all in Russia. Uh, Chabad was only in Russia until the last 10 years of the previous, well, I guess last 20 years of the previous Rebbe's life. <clears throat> in the last 10 years, it moved to America, but until then, it was Russia. <clears throat> so this Hasid was a businessman. He was a businessman, and he was approached by two other <clears throat> uh, Jews with a business proposition. Uh, in those days, there was no uh, soft drinks, no Coca-Cola or things like that. <clears throat> but somebody developed a type of a drink which was called kvass. Kvass, I guess in English you spell it K-V-A-S. Kvass. And this kvass was sort of like beer. Maybe it really was beer, but in any case, it was sort of like beer. And it was like a soft drink. It was sort of a soft drink. And what didn't exist in Russia? And they came to this businessman, they said, listen, we <clears throat> have an idea. We want to make kvass. My friend here, he knows how to make it. He knows how to run a factory. I know about advertising. I know how to advertise and distribution. But we need your money. You'll be the backer. You'll be the silent partner. And we're going to make a fortune. And <clears throat> so... He went and he checked up on these two people. They were honest people. They were trustworthy. And his wife was tremendously happy. Now we're going to be rich. We're going to be the you know kings. We're going to make a fortune. And, but he said, I want to go to the Rebbe and ask him. His wife said, there's absolutely no need. This is a sure thing. I have a sense. My his wife said, I know it. I know a sure thing when I see it. This is it. <clears throat> he said, no, I'm going to the Rebbe. Anyway. So he went to the Rebbe. The Rebbe Marash, and he told him the whole story, and the Rebbe said, don't do it. So he went to his wife, and he said, it's off. We're not doing it. His wife said, what? What are you talking about? He said, I went to the Rebbe. He said, I told you not to go. He says, we're, we're, we're Chabad. You have to go to the Rebbe. But a sure thing like this, just asking the question, already puts a doubt on the whole thing. The Rebbe saw, if you have any doubts, that he told you not to do it. You shouldn't have gone. I said, okay, but the Rebbe said, no, I can't do it. He said, well, did you explain to him? exactly what it is and that these other two partners did you explain things or did you just say in general I said okay you know I, I said in general that, that, that I have this offer to make this kvass and the Rebbe said no I said well go back to the Rebbe his wife said go back to the Rebbe and explain to him exactly what this kvass is and that there's no competition and that there's a tremendous need and that these other two people are honest and that they're trustworthy, and that you checked up on them. He said, listen, I don't." his wife nagged, nagged him and nagged him until he went back. So he said, Rebbe, I'm sorry, my wife is forcing me to do this. I don't really want to. And I don't want to take up your time, but please. And he explained all the details. And the Rebbe said, I told you no. And I told it's not, it's not good, don't do it. So he goes back to his wife and said, I explained to the Rebbe, and that's it. So she said, really, I mean, listen, between me and you, the Rebbe is a great man. He's a holy man. He's a wise man, but he's not a businessman. He doesn't really know about business. He doesn't know about the market. He doesn't know what, <clears throat> what going, he probably never drank, get pleasure from this world ever. Kvass, that people like kvass. He doesn't know what it means. <clears throat> write the whole thing down. Write it down. He says, listen, I can't go to the Rebbe and talk to him again. He said, don't talk to him. You know what? I'll write. She writes a whole letter. She says, copy the letter over. He copies everything down. Now go to the Rebbe. Goes to the Rebbe another time. Gives the Rebbe in the letter. The Rebbe reads the letter. He said, I said, you shouldn't do it. Goes back home. His wife, he says, that's it. It's off. His wife nags him and nags him. We're going to lose. We're going <clears> to, <throat> somebody else is going to take the opportunity. They're going to make it. They're going to this. They're never going to let you down. I'll never let you forget it. Now this. Anyway, finally, she makes him crazy and he invests the money and he loses every penny. The whole thing was a failure from the beginning to the end. Nobody wants this kvass. He had big storehouses, warehouses full of kvass, and nobody wants it. It was distributed, and nobody bought it, and whatever it was, didn't work. So it, now he's a pauper. So he goes back to the Rebbe to ask forgiveness. He says, Rebbe, I'm sorry. 
You know, I didn't take your advice. So the Rebbe said, listen, I have, there's three types of Hasidim that they follow my advice. One is because they say that the Rebbe has a, a lot of wisdom. He's a, a wise person. He's very wise and he has this special wisdom. And therefore, because he's has this good, sharp look at everything, acumen, so he does. So that, then there's other Hasidim that say, <clears throat> already has a lot of experience. He's got a lot of experience. A lot of people come to him. And because of all of his experiences, he's learned from experience how to give proper answers. That experience. So some say because of my experience, some say because of my wisdom. Other people say, no, the Rebbe is a holy person. And what he said says is God's opinion. God's opinion. And therefore, we should listen to him. He said, and you, you didn't listen not because I'm a holy person, not because I'm a wise person, not because I'm an experienced person. So you deserve to lose all of your money. Deserve to lose. Anyway, what's the point? The point is, is that when the Rebbe says something, is that we should definitely listen to him, whether because the Rebbe is an experienced person and he learned from, or because the Rebbe has just tremendous deep wisdom, or because the Rebbe is a holy person, a prophet, a Navi, a prophet, a Navi. And when the Rebbe says that exactly what the Rambam says, that we have to <clears throat> do everything we can and say everything we can and think everything we can, and that all of the days of our life should be to bring the Mashiach. The Rebbe said days means all of our time and all of our life should be all of our energy. To bring Mashiach as the Rebbe is right. And we should do it. And if we don't do it, nevertheless, we still deserve Mashiach now. Have a good day. God willing, see you all tomorrow. Have a good day with Mashiach now. Thank you. My pleasure. Oh.